The method of blackening foods really hit its stride all the way back in the 1980s when famed New Orleans restaurant K. Paul started featuring blackened red drum on its menu. That's a local redfish, and soon restaurants all over were featuring the dish, which caused an overfishing issue. So restaurants had to start blackening other things like shrimp and steaks and chicken, which Dan's going to show us how to make today. I think this gives blackened fish a run for its money. It's just as popular. Yes, it's so good. I think the first thing we have to sort out here is what blackening actually is. Right. People are very confused. I think you could, is it a spice blend? Is it a cooking method? Is it something you even do at home? Right. And the answer is to all of those, yes. Okay. So it's a lot, there's a lot going on here. We're gonna start with the spice blend itself. We're gonna start with a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Mm. It's gonna add a little bit of smokiness to it, which is great. That's kind of the direction that we're heading. And then a tablespoon of regular paprika, or sweet paprika, a tablespoon of kosher salt, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, one and a half teaspoons of ground black pepper. We've got one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano, one and a half teaspoons of dried thyme. Okay. And then the last ingredient is a little more flexible, a half to one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And this is really how spicy you want yours to be. I'm gonna use the whole thing, but you can absolutely pull back here if you want less. Okay, I like it spicy. And then so you just use your whisk to combine this in a nice pie plate here. Now, it's great that you're kind of controlling the spice levels here instead of buying something that's pre-made. Absolutely, yeah. And you can, you know, pick the ingredients that you want, get a good brand of Spanish paprika. You can make something that's a lot nicer. Okay, that's great. I'm gonna set this aside and we'll get into our chicken. We're working with four six to eight ounce chicken breasts. Now, we're gonna do cutlets. One of the reasons for that is we want them to cook through in the same amount of time it takes to get beautiful blackening on the outside. So if you have a really thick breast, like a whole breast in there, you're gonna like actually get burning before the inside is done. Gotcha. And blackening really is this fine line between Maillard browning, which we love on steaks and everything, and actual burning. Now we're gonna work with our cutlets. If you know the old method of making cutlets where you take the whole breast and you try to go through this way, it's challenging. It's yes. hard to get them even. And you start with a thin end and a thick end, so it just doesn't line up well. So this is a, a truly game-changing way to make cutlets. I absolutely love it. So what we're gonna do is actually slice right down the middle. So we've got our nice thin piece there. And then I move this to the edge, and this is the only part that we're gonna have through the center. That's great because it's already relatively even. Exactly. So our thick part becomes two nice thin parts. Nice. And we're gonna pound them a little bit, but I'm gonna go through all the breasts first. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna pound the chicken out to about a third of an inch, which isn't gonna take that long considering that they're already nice and thin. Yes. But I'm gonna use some plastic wrap to make this a whole lot easier. And I'm gonna space out, I like to do half and half, so I'm gonna do six and six. Another bit of plastic on top. Just makes it nice, you're not getting everything stuck to the meat pounder. Yes. It makes it a whole lot easier. All right, so we're looking for about a third of an inch thick, which doesn't take very long to get those down to it. All right, ultra thin. Ultra thin. Now that we have all of our cutlets pounded out, it's time to dredge them. So I like to just have a nice order of operations here. We're gonna go from here and to here and then there. I see that. I like to really dredge all over and then we'll just do a little, little pat and shake, make sure we don't have any excess on there. This is so aromatic though. You can already smell basically everything that's in it. There's cayenne in the air. So I'm gonna keep dredging these until I have all of them done. All right. Okay, so we did all of the spice part of blackening, right? So we understand that. Yes. Now, time for cooking. A lot of people think that it's only a restaurant dish because you need a super powerful hood, you get tons of smoke, and it would smoke out a house. Right. And that is true if you try to do exactly what they do in a restaurant. <laughs> we found some cool tips to actually minimize the smoke. You'll see that it's a lot less than you might expect. Okay. So we're starting with a cast iron pan here. This is a nice 12 inch one. It retains a ton of heat, so you're gonna get really good browning and blackening on this. And quick. And quick, yep. I'm gonna start with a teaspoon of oil. This is really gonna be mostly an indicator for when this is hot. So we wanna get this oil to the point where it is just starting to smoke. We're in really good searing territory when it hits that point. Okay. So I have the skillet over high heat, and that's where we're gonna do all of our cooking. We've got wisps of smoke. That means it's very, very hot. Now I'm gonna go in with my butter. This is a tablespoon that's just cut into a couple of pieces, and I wanna get it nice and melted in there. The protein in the butter and the milk solids is gonna help us with beautiful browning and blackening. Mm. If we got it in there too early, you can see there's a ton of smoke from right. it. Right, right. So that's great. Now we're gonna go in with six of our cutlets. So crowding the pan like this and actually covering most of the surface area is really key to this recipe. Any spots where you don't have it, they heat up a lot more and they turn that fat into a pretty smoky mess. So everything I've ever learned about sauteing, I should just throw out the window. Chuck it out the window. All right. So we're gonna put them in. 
and press them down with our spatula. We want really good contact. And we're gonna leave them undisturbed for two minutes. We'll get beautiful blackening. Sounds great. At Cooks Illustrated, we're food nerds. That's why every recipe we develop involves research, cooking science, and rigorous testing by our team of expert test cooks before being tested by our dedicated community of 40,000 home cooks. Only the highest rated recipes earn a place in our award-winning magazine. Every issue features our latest recipes and discoveries, cooking tips, and equipment and ingredient reviews. Our step-by-step -step photos and hand-drawn illustrations show you exactly how to succeed. What you won't see, even a single page of advertising. We've worked for home cooks like you for over 30 years. So, are you ready to become the best cook you know? Subscribe to Cooks Illustrated Magazine at cooksillustrated.com today. Okay, that's two minutes. We're gonna flip them over. And mm. look at that beautiful crust. Gorgeous. That is beautiful. Beautiful. You can still see a little bit of that red color coming through. Red color, the browning, mm. and some a little bit charred spots. So this just takes another minute on this side. Okay. Because they're so thin, and then we'll get them right out of the skillet. Sounds great. Okay, so I'm going to move this off the heat here. Ooh. And I want that skillet to keep cooking as we get the chicken out. And we'll transfer these over to our wire rack. Man, this smells good. We're well beyond good here. This oh, smells man. amazing. It doesn't smell burnt at all. So I'm going to use a paper towel here to clean out some of the debris in the bottom. We're going to do our next batch. And if you leave all that in there, it already wants to burn. So right. <laughs> you're going to start in a very smoky place. So we want to be right over that same heat. Back to high. Back to high. For this batch, we're going to use, you can see the smoke. We're going to add two tablespoons of butter. We don't have the initial fat from the oil that we put in. Right. So we're going to use all of this. Mm, that brown butter smells so good. Gorgeous. Great. And then we'll go right in with our second batch. Mm. And then again, we're going to press down. Make sure we have really nice contact between both surfaces. That's gonna help with browning. Okay. So we're gonna go two minutes on this side. We'll get beautiful browning. We'll flip over and then just another minute on the second side and I'll be done. Fast food? Beautiful. So that's been mm. two minutes. And we'll get them onto the other side. Look at that. Lovely. So we're gonna let them finish on the second side. It takes about a minute. I'm gonna pop them on the wire rack and we'll let them rest for about three minutes. And it's time to dig in. Fabulous. Okay. We're about to eat. Yes. We've got all of our cutlets over here. The final batch rested for about three minutes, so I'm just going to platter them up. Because at this point, you are competition for the restaurants. You should have to make it look exactly. really Exactly, nice. yeah. I want to stay in business. Yes. Yeah, I feel like once you try this recipe, you just start blackening everything in your kitchen. <laughs> all right. Can I serve you one or five? Yeah. We'll see. Well, the plate kind of limits. I know. We'll get bigger plates next time. There we go. I do have to smell this. Beautiful. Pretty good? Beautifully spiced. I know, look at that color. Not even a slight aroma of anything burnt. Yep. Which is great. That's great. All right, let's try these. Mmm. That's warm. That's a beautiful blend of spices. Oh, I get that smoked paprika there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Chicken yeah. is so tender. You actually get crustiness, mm -hmm. you know, from all the spices and the butter and all that kind of browning. It's it's crispy on the outside, and you get this rich, rich flavor. It's a little hard to pin down in kind of a nice way. It really is. Yeah. But it's that brown butter, you're right. That brown butter kind of brings forth all of those other flavors. You get the warm spices in there. Mm -hmm. you get a little bit of an herbal note, a little bit of a creeping heat. Mm -hmm. mm. And I love the ratio. The chicken is pounded so thin that you get this beautiful ratio of meat to spice. That's true. It's almost equal. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's juicy, it's flavorful. Really? It's like, you know, a, a snacky food you want to mm -hmm. keep going with. And this came together really quickly, too. Mm -hmm. Super quick. Excellent, excellent chicken. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. If you want to make this beautiful blackened chicken at home, press thin chicken cutlets directly into a smoky, spicy mixture. Cover as much of the pan as possible with the chicken, and then be sure to wipe out the skillet between batches. So from America's Test Kitchen via New Orleans and the 1980s, it's the beautiful blackened chicken. Mm. Not brown, definitely not burnt. Blackened, right in the middle. Right there. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level, head over to americastestkitchen.com and get a free all access trial membership. While you're there, you can sign up for our free email newsletters and download our app. With unlimited access to over 14,000 of our Test Kitchen recipes 
and 8,000 product reviews, you'll have everything you need to cook and learn. So I ask, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let's make something great together.